Testing the speaker to the sound. Okay. Sounds good. Can everybody hear? Okay, so once you um, navigate to that window, you should see a login and then register icon. Just go ahead and click register. And then select the student. Keep testing the sound. Is that, is, are there some people in and some people not in? Okay, if you're in, can you help other people get in? Thanks. So I, can't, I can't manage 27. So if you're already in and you've already set it up, can you help other people get in? Thank you. Are you guys in? Are you in? Are you in? Are you in? Well, can you do it on this one? I don't know how you do it. Is that the No. I'm trying to get in your class. I don't know how. You guys all set up? Are you set up? Yeah, like the class number. You guys tell me if you set up. Do you have the class number? Are we a class or a personal portfolio? I already have my own portfolio. Members of the wrong place. You didn't see the thing for like the class code. Yeah, can you show your screen on how to do it? Uh, Elizabeth, can you show your screen? Yeah, absolutely. All right, so, so far we're in the class yet. Oh, yeah. I think most. So, are you guys logged in? What, what should they be seeing? Um, right after you logged in here, I can actually count your speakers. 
So is that what they should see? Do we start with the you're gonna start off with a million. Why do I feel like a nine on the right? Oh, is it 100 million? Yeah, it's that it's on the finance. Yeah, you can always add the strategy later. They can, uh, they can add the strategy later, or do they get to add it right up front? So here is the Okay, hold on a second. Okay, so go ahead. Uh, is the uh, the class ID is the is that the uh, uh, the class ID is that the biz at one thirty six? Oh, there it is. Right there. Uh, you can put that in later. I just want you to be able to start putting the stocks in and then get that part set up. You can put in the strategy later. Everybody ask, is anybody getting the water? Okay, are you using this computer? Do you want uh, like anything for our portfolio name? Uh, yeah, put your strategy name. Yeah. 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 Okay, so what what do they put in as the student number? Or is it just their name? Your student ID is your student number. Oh nine three seven three. And then here's the class ID. Oh, Thank you. No strategy. Oh, I need a strategy. Okay, Elizabeth, I think everybody's in. Uh, no, where it says no strategy, is that a drop down? Yeah. That is a drop down. And then uh, can we pick equity? Because we're doing an equity portfolio or equity strategy. Yeah, you can, depending on you know, whatever you back for, you don't have an equity strategy specifically, but anything from a long strategy to 
Uh, yeah. Yeah, put put long short in your put long short because you have, you have the ability to go short on these things. You don't have the ability to go on margin. And Eric, I'm sorry to say, we don't have the capabilities to trade options on this thing. Oh, okay. But we'll do that through the CMU. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, so this, what you're seeing here is actually version two of our simulation. So just for fall, currently it's just equities, ETFs, and bonds that come in in October. And then start of January, so for spring semester, we are rolling out mutual funds, options, futures, and even cryptocurrency. So those are kind of uh, foreshadowing the things to come, but just currently on our platform, equities, <laughs> ETFs, and bonds are available. Great. Is it already there? Okay, cool. Okay, we're ready to go. Awesome. And then just to clarify, in that bottom right-hand corner, everyone can see that chat icon. Here you can see you can talk to anyone from our team. Uh, any questions about the platform or even finance questions, uh, you can get those answers uh, by a real person. So that's 24 hours support. And then right below there, you can find an answer quickly to any of your questions. Go ahead and search strategy. What was the question again? Um, has everyone created their portfolio and linked it with your unique class ID? Uh, they haven't done that yet. Can you show them how to add the, uh, the tickers? They can see your screen. Okay. Did anyone select the add portfolio? Yeah. So do they uh, do the personal or the class portfolio? In your um, Excel spreadsheets, in the uh, target portfolio slide, worksheet, uh, change the 1 million to 100. Uh, 
because we put 100 million in here, mm -hmm. right? Um, so in the, uh, the portfolio Excel sheet that I built for you guys, can the target portfolio worksheet change the 1 million to 100? Okay. And then you might have to play with the columns to, uh, to make sure it all fits. Okay, go ahead, Elizabeth. Now, do you guys have do you have do you have links to their uh, their website so that they can go into the investor relations and look at the press releases and the earnings releases and the conference call you know recordings and stuff like that? And then in the in the rationale, uh, do you have the capability to be able to attach a file? Let's say we wanted to show a technical chart or a, uh, an earnings release or uh, a comment from an equity analyst or uh, you know uh, something. Is there a way to kind of create an archive of supporting materials? Is there a space limitation on the uh, rationale? I believe it goes up to 500. Okay. And then for the strategy, when you're making a uh, trade strategy, you have the ability to select from a drop down menu, as well as if you're unsure about what maybe some of those strategies mean, the help desk in the bottom right hand corner has a article dedicated to just trade strategy. So any questions you might have about what does a diversification strategy mean? You can answer those questions. Any, any questions? Dividend reinvestment. Are there dividend reinvestment uh, options here? If they pay a dividend? Yeah, because I guess at the end of September, probably by October 10th or 15th, most of the uh, companies will have issued their releases and or gone ex dividend date, you know, on their shares that they pay dividend. And then that cash, does the cash go into the portfolio for reinvestment or is it just strictly uh, buy sell on the trades? And is there a is there a cash account in this? Um, just the cash in your portfolio. So that's the kind of starting value as well as what uh, you interact with throughout the semester. Yeah, but if I do, I have to fully allocate the hundred million up front and then be fully <clears throat> vested in the hundred million, or can I have like a, 
you know, a hundred grand in cash laying around to. Yeah, you can sell hold um, a percentage of your portfolio in cash completely. Yeah, up to you. So you don't want to invest the entire portfolio. Okay. Any uh, questions? Can you only make market? Just speak up. Can you only make market trades, or can you do like limit trades, or what are the options on that? Anybody else have any questions? Did everybody get online? Were you able to get online? Okay, good. Everybody online? <laughs> okay, so can you go ahead and then put in the, based off, I'll come around and look at your, uh, or actually what you'll do now is, uh, Elizabeth, did you have any comments or anything or any recommendations or any words of advice so we can win? Yeah. <laughs> Should we do another, um, <clears throat> do you do any um, investment training where we have a, either a, a simulated portfolio or one of our students' portfolios, we can go over the <clears throat> trades that we've made and get some feedback, um, kind of go through some of the thought processes of, you know, making these trades, trades based off of fundamental or technical or press releases or something, do you have any of that kind of training too? So how to like better think about the market and analyze? Yeah, yeah, like uh, <clears throat> like I'm teaching them the, already, I've taught them a lot of the fundamentals and the, and the technical. Right, kind of value of money. Yeah, but do you guys do any thing like that? Maybe even going through the rationales, walking us through the rationales? Well, it seems like the most important now would be to get the, the trades in, get the portfolio in, and then study the rationales and go back and kind of review what we've done over the last year or two. And uh, 
start making some trades and seeing if we can, you know, we can get on your radar screen. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. Perfect. All right. Any other last thoughts, questions, concerns? Any questions? Comments? Okay. All right. Thanks, Elizabeth. Elizabeth. Thank you. All right. Take care. Bye. Bye. So on your, can somebody pull up the, uh, one of the uh, spreadsheets, the passive strategy spreadsheets? Yeah, for the class. So pull up your, your passive strategy uh, worksheet, um, the Excel spreadsheet, and go to the uh, master you know, target portfolio, or go to the master portfolio worksheet. So this is the first thing I want to do, and then go down on that. That master portfolio worksheet, not the back test. We'll go to the master portfolio. What where everything's basically runs off. Yeah. Okay. Oh. So in if you go to what's that cell right there? One million. Uh, F31. Uh, if you go to F31, it's a hard coded one million. Okay. So in the uh, master target portfolio F. 31 is a hard cord 1 million, you put in 100 million. Yeah, put in 100 million. And then what that'll do is that'll kick out the number of uh, shares that you're going to need to buy for that so you can stick it in the system. Okay. And the, the pricing will be a little bit different, so you might have to play with the prices to get, a, to get the portfolio to be set at 100 million. Okay. That's the first thing I would do. <clears throat> and then um, have you already? put in the prices. So you put in the prices in the target portfolio worksheet for January 1st. Yeah. Right? And then you go back, did you just put in the prices? Yeah. yeah. And then the forward test, did you put in the, the June, the I'm sorry, the March, the June, the September numbers also? And I gave out to you today the uh, return, the returns for the S P five hundred. So then stick into you with the cell right there. H H32. You might want to, if you want to, I wouldn't hard code it in. I put the I put the equation in there, you know, the Excel equation. So that later on, if you ever want to use this thing again, that's all you gotta do is update the indexes and it'll calculate the uh, the returns. Okay, on a historical basis. And if you've already done all of that, you should um, now be able to see what your uh, gross returns are. We, we didn't apply any fees, no net fees, no taxes, just good gross returns on your portfolio. So maybe you can tell me, um, tell me now, uh, maybe you guys can, your teams can get up um, individually and give me the elevator pitch on your portfolio strategy. And if you have any performance metrics, I'd like to hear it. This will be the first of your pitches um, that you will make. Uh, on your portfolios, this is just a passive portfolio, but your overall portfolio strategy of, con of constructing the portfolio over the last week, um, you may have to go back and refine it, maybe. Uh, we'll hear how you communicate it in an initial pitch. We're in a, a product development meeting. Um, you've now just developed a, uh, a passive portfolio strategy. The selected stocks that you picked, either based on fundamental analysis or some screening techniques, um, you come up with a portfolio composition, maybe by sector, maybe by size, maybe it's international by sector size composition. That's what you're selling the investor. Maybe you're selling returns. If they're risk neutral, they're just looking for returns. If they're risk averse. And they're going to be looking for a target return of at least 8% a year uh, with uh, low standard deviation, so high risk adjusted greater return. Or some other maybe low returns below the benchmark, but you've, you've been able to really push down the standard deviation 
So the risk adjusted rate of return is really high, and you built them a bullet credit, really safe portfolio where they'll they'll be willing to take a, a five or six percent rate of return, but you cram down the standard deviation. Okay. Um, cram down the data in the portfolio. So who wants to do the first pitch on their portfolio? Get up and tell us what you did. What's your strategy? And then give us some preliminary uh, uh, performance. This is, the, this is the real world, people. This is how it works. <clears throat> this is how it works. You get up and you start talking. Okay? I'm not going to call on people. I'm not going to manage the course. Okay? You have to take control. You have to take responsibility. Perfect. Can you jump up and, and give us the pitch? Yeah. Okay, so basically, um, I started off by just thinking about um, the different kinds of uh, uh, sectors that we should go into. And um, ones that were like pretty lucrative. And so we started off with like alcohol, finance, entertainment, agriculture, and food, luxury products, pharma, retail, consumer goods, and military slash aero. Um, then we looked into each of those sectors and found like the best companies and compared. Obviously, we only can have 25 and that's a lot of sectors. So you only can get like two or three in. So you really want to. So we looked at their past performance. And, you know, in financial, there's a lot of companies. We try to pick the best two or three based on their uh, past returns. Um, and then what's your, yeah, what's, your, what's your sector allocations by industry type? Um, to give us kind of an idea of what your uh, the risk profile is that you're selling this portfolio. Okay. Any other? So and you can always plug it in if you want to show it to us too. Um, so, so we did wholesale trade information, finance and insurance, transportation and warehousing, manufacturing and retail and trade. And do you have a, a percentage composition in the? Uh, memo that I sent out to you, it shows you by sector, not only the allocation of the total portfolio by the individual stocks, but by the individual composition yeah. by industry of the whole portfolio. Yeah. Um, that's really the, that's where I'm going to go. Yeah. Quickly, I'm going to go right to the, I'm going to look at the benchmark returns and I'm going to look at the alpha. Okay, that's the first thing. Do you hit the hurdle rate and can you beat the market? That's the first thing I look at. And then I'm going to look at the portfolio composition and that'll tell me exactly what your strategy is going to be and who you're trying to target. So for like the sector weights, uh, tech yeah. was 22.8%, okay. defense was 11.24%, okay. healthcare was 28 consumer goods was 158 services is 11.15%, and financials is 10.69%. Great. And then have you run any back tests on your uh, performance? Yeah. yeah. What did you get on the 10? I'm going to go straight to the 10 year. Because uh, the tenure includes a couple cycles. It includes the uh, 2008 period, which was a total disaster. And the market's been in just a straight upward <coughs> trend over the last 10 years. So I want to capture that down period <coughs> to see how resilient these stocks are. And then the tenure performance is usually what I use when I'm selling you know, a, a portfolio strategy to my clients. It's hard to sell in a three month or a six month or a one year, you know, or even a three year especially when you've been straight up for ten, nine years. So by going back 10 years, um, that's really going to be telling. And what, how'd you do? Uh, for 10 years, we had 12.2%. Nice. And then what was the, uh, what was the benchmark return on the S&P 500? Was um, it like 7.6? 7. 7. So your basis, your, your uh, alpha? Five, oh, our alpha, yeah. 468. That's pretty good. You can sell that. Okay, that's great. Nice job. Matt's ready to go. We went over this this morning. He's gonna, he's gonna show you how to do it. <laughs> uh, we did a uh, thirty percent. Well, tell us the overall strategy first. Uh, um, I just chose stocks that. And again, we. Oh yeah, we. Chose we, can, we constructed a portfolio that blah blah blah. So yeah. just pretend you're not talking to your student friends. You're talking to a, a board of directors or a client. So we chose stocks that. Uh, we thought we were going to do well. Um, defense, high tech, cyber security, and pharmaceuticals. 30% uh, defense, 30% high tech, 20% cyber security, and 20% pharmaceuticals. 
10% small cap, 40% mid, and 50% large. So the reason I'm like the large cap as a stabilizer for the smaller companies. Okay, when you're articulating this, you want to kind of come out and say, you know, we constructed a portfolio to target a risk, risk, risk averse investors. Okay, our expected return on the portfolio, whatever you did on your tenure, that's going to be your expected return. We expect an expected return of 12% uh, compared to an average return on the market of around seven or eight. We think we can outbeat the market by at least 500 basis points, maybe 400 basis points in the composition of the, uh, of the portfolio is mainly in diversification, um, but with return. And that's why we weighted it X percent in large caps, X percent in mid caps, X percent in small caps. So just kind of giving us a you know, kind of an elevator pitch right off the bat. And then if you want to nail it, you say we anticipate being able to raise at least $2 billion in asset center management or AUM within the next three years, three to five years. And we, our fee targets on this is probably going to be around 100 basis points. So if it's a safe and highly liquid and large cap, you pull down the, you know, the fee structures. If it's, you're taking more risk and if you add in that we'll also be trading actively the portfolio and a long short strategy. We'll also be conducting fundamental securities analysis for trading purposes along with technical securities analysis. We think that with the active and the passive approach, we can charge up to 250 basis points. So again, kind of getting the language, getting the pitch down. Okay, who's next? All right, Kim, really, you're next. Can, can you like pitch pitches? Yeah. So we constructed a portfolio that we thought would do well um, with all the different stocks that we chose. And so our industries are entertainment, social media, healthcare, um, consumer, and finance. Our expected return is about eight percent, and we expect it to be about five twelve percent over the next three years. Um, and we are about sixteen percent large cap, forty percent forty percent small cap. Hey, what was the composition by industry? What was your largest? Our largest one um, is entertainment slash like um, social media. Okay, so it's somewhat defensive, the strategy. You know, you're not looking to shoot for returns. Okay, go ahead. Um, we constructed a portfolio that is a large cap diversified portfolio. Uh, major sectors being technology as well as uh, banking industry. The allocation would be technology, 29.6%, um, healthcare, 4.95%, credit services, banking industry, 25.1%, consumer goods, 11.5%, uh, uh, online entertainment, 10.4%, and then aerospace and tech, 17.7%. Uh, and what was your tenure? Tenure back test, uh, tenure return would be 11.7%, with the S&P index at 7.4%. So your alpha was? Alpha, we work on the numbers, and the numbers would be updated. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, you didn't put in the S&P numbers yet. Right. Well, it's around eight, so, and you did 11? Yeah. Um, so that's 300 basis points. Yeah. Excellent. Okay. All right. You guys already went? Okay, next. Anybody over there? How many guys have you in the group? Okay. And then who hasn't gone yet? sure we put the right numbers in? I'm not putting the equation to yeah. give us so exactly. And then did you have uh, actual pricing going back 10 years? Uh, for most. For most there of them? There were a few of the real estate ones that only like six or seven years old. Okay, it'll be interesting to look at the graphs on that. And look at the composition because that, that's pretty amazing. Yeah, that's pretty amazing. Excellent, okay, next. We're still in the process of putting together our back tests. 
okay, well, give us the portfolio composition and some estimate of your expected return and who you're targeting for, for this product. Do you have a five year? Yeah. And then what was the other what was the other sectors too? So it was gaming and casinos, gaming, resorts, hotels, and entertainment. Okay, that'll be interesting. Did, did you uh, have you calculated the data yet? I'd be interested in seeing what the data is on that. I mean, are you below one or one or it sounds like a fairly uh, diversified defensive strategy. I don't know what the beta is of, you know, these types of entertainment stocks, you know, to the overall market, if, if they're more volatile or less volatile. Do, you know, do these companies lever up and have high leverage, reduce the returns? I mean, it'd be kind of interesting to, to look at some of that uh, industry, the industry backgrounds. Okay, so I think I'm running out of time. Um, did you want to do the, uh, you want to do the derivative trades? You want to be able to apply derivatives to your portfolio? I'm just asking. Do you guys want to trade options on them? Yeah. In futures? Okay, I gave you this right here, which is the CME, the Chicago Emergency. So you can all play with this platform too. But you can go up to trading and simulate some trades, um, not only on the benchmarks for the individual trades, so I'll look into this too. But there's going to be strike prices and floats and stuff for that. And then can you do me a favor too for uh, you? Uh, look at this. I gave one of these for the, uh, each of the individual teams. Can you study this? Chapter 7 goes through the optimization procedure. This is the optimization uh, adopted to the active strategy that we're going to do next after the, after the quiz period. Okay, we're going to come and do the, the active approach. So I'm going to start reading this stuff so it's not going to be and uh, if you look at chapter seven, the optimization, when you look at this, it's very similar. And I'll walk through this stuff, and we'll walk through it with the students on Friday, the people who are going to go. And then on Wednesday, bring in the problems. Okay, does everybody have problems to work on? Okay, on Wednesday? Okay, great. And I have the problems for the next set, too. So and I'll get those out to you on Wednesday. Make sure that you give me your problems that you present. Um, in the uh, in the Delifical one, do a cover page, and then staple all of the problems that you did together as the homework. Yeah. Just the ones that we did individually. Huh? Yes, the ones. Yeah, just those um, ones. And then make sure when you do the presentations, bring in the homework problems into the presentation. Okay. And then what I'll do for the exam, I'll probably have like five or ten questions. Yeah. Yeah. You can do in class. Yeah. Pretty good. So you go to the We don't have to do like everyone's work problems anymore. Well, this is more of an advanced class. So I like that's that's really more for the uh, 